Galaxy Z Flip 5. Today I'm going to do my review after uh, doing my Pixel 7 review a little over a week ago. Uh, I feel like I'm a little bit better, have my thoughts more gathered to do a review on the Galaxy Z Flip 5. Now this came out, oh gosh, I believe in August of last year. I have not had it since August. I have had this for maybe two months, maybe close to three. I actually had purchased this from a friend who, he didn't hate the phone per se, but it just really wasn't for him, so he cut me a deal. So at the beginning of this review, I, I'm going to try to keep it as short and sweet as I can. This phone is, I believe starts at $999. This particular version here, the 512 gig, I believe starts at like $1,120. And to keep this short and sweet, for those of you who don't want to watch the entire review, I can pretty much sum it up in one question to you guys. If you are not willing to pay $1,000 for any phone out there, you can pretty much just write this one off your list, okay? Because if you don't think any phone is worth that much, then pretty much this one isn't really going to be worth that much to you. Okay, so this is the mint color. Okay, so if I flip this over here, uh, it's the mint color. I did have a case for this. It was made by Rinky, and it had the hinge protection, so when the phone was open, it had a hinge protector, or I guess I should say when it's closed, you know, it, it had a hinge protector. But this is the mint color. I really like it. Looks pretty nice. Trying to get some good good light on that. I do want to apologize if you guys hear I have a fan going in the background as well as a heater, a propane heater that makes a bit of a hiss. So I do gen genuinely apologize for that. It is very cold in, in the place that I uh, record these videos. So please just try to overlook that and bear with me. In the box, um, it's a pretty lame unboxing, I'm not going to lie. I mean, so when you when you open the box, you're going to have your device right here on the bottom portion. Okay, it's going to be wrapped up, of course. You know, I've been using this phone. And then just usual books and stuff. So we've got a SIM ejection tool. I actually don't know if this comes with a charging cable. Let me set this to the side really quick. Um, yes, it comes with a cable. There we go. But of course, you know, as the trend has been going the last few years, no, no charger in the box. It's kind of lame, you know, especially given how much you you pay for devices and your your quick start guide and stuff like that are in here, but. I mean, what can you do? I mean, we, we could sit here and say, hey, you know, bring back the charger in the box, but I don't think a lot of companies are going to. Some phone makers out there still include a charger in the box, and to those companies, I say just wow, just a, a huge thumbs up, that's great. But for the majority of devices, there's no charger in the box, and that's just kind of how it goes. I do think it's a bit lame overall, but at the same time, I think most people kind of use the same charger year after year. And, you know, generally speaking, chargers aren't very expensive, but it's just kind of lame that, you know, they seem to be taking away more and more. So, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if in the next few years they just say, hey, you don't get a cable either. So, I'm just going to try to take my time in this review and not try to rush it, you know. I, I tried to keep it short and sweet with my Pixel review, and although it was kind of, it was an okay review, I just want to try to take my time with this phone and do as good a job as I can. None of this is scripted. Um, as far as build quality, I have no complaints there. It feels like a nice, solid phone in the hand. You know, it feels just like any other phone. I'll show you guys the crease because that's probably what a lot of people will be concerned with. 
Now, when it comes to the crease, you do get used to it. So, for me, before I had a flip phone, I was kind of thinking, you know, and eh, that's kind of a bit of a bummer, but that's just kind of a trade-off, you know. I do think the crease will get a little better over time. I'm going to scoot back here and see if you guys can kind of see that in the light. Yeah, that's a good view right there. Can you, can you guys kind of see that, that crease right there? Now, I don't have any of the previous flips to compare it to. So I can't really give a, uh, a judgment on that. But there is a good look at the crease, okay? Now, this does come with, you know, the built-in screen protector from Samsung. And as far as I can tell, this one has held up very well. I don't see any bubbling or anything. And... Uh, you know, I'm just trying to take a good look here. But apparently, if you do start to experience that within the first year, Samsung will put you on another screen protector at no cost. As, at least that's as far as I've read. Uh, but this one seems to be holding up well. So, you know, overall build quality, it feels nice. Personally, I think it looks nice. Uh, there's, there's the back of it. You can kind of see that mint color and that cover screen and those dual cameras some people may like the look of it now it's mostly a glossy phone you know the back here is glossy uh, the sides are definitely a glossy feel you know so it's it's a bit of a fingerprint magnet for sure you know I, I wish the sides were kind of that matte feel to them because I do like that overall may, maybe they'll try to do that with the flip six kind of do a bit of a matte feel on the side, but I understand why they went with this glossy um, texture on the sides because it does make it, you know, really pop and stand out. So I, I, I had a case on this when I bought it from my friend for about a month. I had a case on it, maybe a little more than a month, but I have been rocking this without a case for maybe about two weeks now i've dropped it twice luckily on, on not a hard surface i dropped it in my bathroom hashtag bathroom squad okay uh, but the floor in my bathroom is just like tile so nothing super hard and then i dropped it on the carpet in my bedroom so but if you're a if you're a clumsy person if you can't really hold on to your phone i mean I think everyone's going to drop their phone eventually, so it's probably a good thing to get a case for it. I have one in my Amazon shopping cart. I really just need to go ahead and, and buy that. It's a, uh, it's a ring key case. Now, as far as the hinge protection, I'm not too worried about that. So the case I have picked out, it, it doesn't have the hinge protection. It just adds a little bit more bulk to it. But the annoying part with those cases, with the hinge protection, is when you open them, you have this big piece kind of sticking across the back here. And that's what really got on my nerves with the, um, the case my friend had included with this when I purchased it from him. So whenever I pull the trigger on the case that's in my Amazon cart, it has no hinge protection. You know, I just need something that helps me grip it a little better when it's, when it's unfolded. But as far as when it's when it's closed, it feels like a, I feel like I can get a pretty good good grip on it. Okay, uh, so let's go ahead and turn this on and kind of start talking about some things. The only so this I didn't really have this complaint when it when it's in a case because you know when you put a case on your phone, it kind of makes your volume buttons feel a little bit bigger if you know what I mean. Uh, the, the volume rocker on this phone it just feels really thin to me it it's not it's I don't know it just feels a little bit thin and and I wish there was a bit of a separation between them instead of one solid you know volume rocker I wish it, there was a a distinct separation between volume up and volume down but that that's a pretty minor thing um Let's see here. Can I put in my code? I think it's going to ask me. Yes, yeah, swipe up. Put in my code. Okay. It's loading up. I'm going to just turn off my Wi-Fi so I don't get any notifications. 
Now, as I'm doing this review, I'm on Android 14, I believe, yes, and, and the uh, One UI 6.0. So, um, the fingerprint sensor, you know, that's something I use every day. I love that. I mean, it's very fast, as you can see. Just so awesome. Apparently, you know, it's, it's constantly looking for your fingerprint. So, when, you, when the device is locked and you kind of just place your thumb there, it's like, boom, unlocked. I do believe this has face unlock. I don't know if I've set that up. It's kind of hard to, apparently I don't. It says face doesn't match. I have got a haircut, but I don't know if I have even set this up. But So I can't really speak on that too much. But as far as I know and as far as I've read, the uh, the face unlock is, is pretty good. Not super secure, but, you know, pretty good. Fingerprint sensor you know it's built into the sleep wake button fantastic as far as the display that is you know one of my favorite things about this if you watch my pixel 7 review one of my biggest complaints about that was the um display just does not get very bright on the pixel 7 i haven't tried the pixel 8 or the 8 pro so from what i've heard those displays on the the newer pixels are a lot better but as far as um, the phones that I have, I have a Pixel 7, an iPhone 13, and then I have this Flip 5. This is my favorite display just because it gets so bright and I love it. You guys have probably heard that so many times in a review of a Samsung device. You know, the display gets very bright. But it's, it's true, it gets really bright. And I like that. Now, one of the settings I have turned on is called Extra Bright, I believe. So I just keep that on. Uh, right now, I'm probably not even at half brightness. So, um, and as far as the speakers, the speakers on this are, are really good. No complaints about the speakers. Way better than the speakers on the Pixel 7. And I would say, honestly, I think the speakers on my iPhone 13 are really good. And I would say these are really close you know i'll take either one i'm not like an audio expert but these definitely sound better than the speakers on the pixel 7 um plenty of bass good clarity it gets really loud um so digging more into the specs here you know you've got the snapdragon 8 gen 2 which at this point in early 2024 that's not the latest flagship anymore it's the snapdragon 8 generation 3 but the generation 2 is still very good still a very capable chip uh, let me see if i can slide you guys over here kind of get you a, a better look kind of tilt this down here there we go just trying to make sure i keep that in frame snapdragon 8 generation 2 the storage options are 256 gigabytes or 512. This one is the 512 gig. My friend really did cut me a, a good deal. And um, eight gigabytes of RAM in either one. No issues with performance. I would say, you know, I mean, it's, it's the 2023 flagship chip and even in early 2024, it's fantastic. So no complaints about performance. Now, this next one's going to be a bit of a, a, controverse, a controversy, or hell, am I, even, am I even saying that right? So, um, in my settings here, if you go to, let's see, uh, da, 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 da. well, I passed it up here, display. Under display, I have set my screen mode no not screen mode motion smoothness to standard so it's at 60 hertz i know a lot of people are thinking you know that totally defeats the purpose this is a 120 hertz display but my simple answer to you would be it's fine if you want to leave it on it does make the phone feel very responsive not not that it feels slow at 60 hertz it still feels nice and responsive it's just not that super smoothness okay 
Uh, but for me and how I use my phones, I much prefer better battery life. And for how I use my phones, 120 hertz or even 90 hertz just doesn't make a whole lot of sense. I don't really need to plug this in, but I'm, I'm going to anyway. Okay, so um, I do keep mine at 60 hertz. But it is a fantastic display and it does feel super smooth on 120. So no complaints about performance. Um, it does have, let's see, I think it has IPX8. So no dust resistance, but it has the, uh, the 8 at, at the end of the IPX8. You know, you have that water resistance. So maybe on the Flip 6... I don't know if it's possible for Samsung to maybe figure out how to do IP68 to get that full dust resistance, but it's not a huge concern for me. I don't really, um, you know, I, I take my phone in the bathroom with me, and, but right now where I don't have a case, now normally um, if, if I call my partner while I'm in the shower, if I had a case on this, I can sort of prop it up in my shower to to talk on the phone, but I wouldn't dare try to prop this up with no case, you know, in in the shower because I would be too too afraid that it would fall. But if I had a case, I would definitely, you know, prop it up and still take calls um, in in the occasion that I do. So let's move on and talk a little bit about battery life. So this doesn't have a very large battery, 3,700 milliamps. I hope that Samsung is able to, maybe with the Flip 6, do a 4,000 milliamp battery just to make it that even kind of 4,000 milliamps. That would be nice. I don't think that's too crazy of an expectation. But um, as far as battery life with this, phone for me now keep in mind this is with the display at 60 hertz and this is probably well it just depends so for me i can't give an exact number for screen on time because my usage does vary you know day to day but i'm able to probably get at least four and a half hours of screen on time i would say at bare minimum, four, okay? But if it's a light day, I can probably get close to six. Um, depending on your usage, you're going to drain this battery anywhere from about 15 to maybe even upwards of 20% per hour, depending on your usage. That's kind of something, you know, I looked in the AccuBattery app and kind of um, came up with those calculations. So... Yes, battery life is not the strong point of this phone, but that's also kind of a trade-off, you know, for for the flip phones at this point. Uh, and from what I know, I think the battery is in the bottom half of this phone. I hope I'm right on that. So, you know, there's only so much space for them to fit a, a battery down here. But hopefully with the, the Flip 6, they can go ahead and squeeze in that 4,000 milliamp battery. That would be really good, you know, paired with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. Now, the whole point of the flip, you know, is this outer display. And can I flip this line off right here? Not that one, but this one. Maybe to, to cut back on glare a little bit. I'm trying to see my camera here, but the, the outer display. So right now, well, it's on charge. Let, let me flip this light off. Can you guys see that? It says 51%, 54 minutes until full. So when you're charging this phone, it looks much brighter on camera. I mean, it's you can still see it pretty easily, but it looks way brighter on camera. So when your phone's charging, you can kind of see, you know, take a quick glance and see your battery percentage. Let's flip that back on. Let the camera adjust for a second. There is a screen protector on the outside here. That's something that my friend put on. So double tap. You can quickly see your time. And if you want to unlock it, you kind of just place your finger on the fingerprint sensor. So double tap, fingerprint sensor, it's unlocked. 
and then you know your notifications will be here so swipe to the right you know it's charging uh, this is so in a lot of the reviews that I've seen the biggest complaint that I have found is people saying you know there's not many apps that by default work on the cover screen of the flip phones but to be honest it doesn't it, it doesn't take a whole lot of effort to download good lock and it has a lot more apps that work with it on the uh, outer display so that's what I have here if you want to use more apps you'll definitely have to give that a download so these are apps that I use pretty frequently well frequently enough to have them on the outer display um, and on the next screen you know you've got your your weather so that's really nice because I do like to try and keep up keep up with the uh, weather and then this is some quick calls so you can add whoever you want here I've got my home uh, my mom and then my dad so if I tap either either one of those it will call them immediately I think that's the most you can add is three okay calendar it's nice to just be able to quickly look and see what day of the week it is or how many days it is until a certain date um, recent calls you know you can scroll up through there and uh, recents and then at the top right you can also do the uh, the dial pad if you want to do the direct number and then uh, here's stock market stuff so if you're investing you know you can see stock market stuff and another quick tip too is if you kind of pinch out you can kind of see all of it all of your I guess little widgets on your cover screen and just quickly tap into another so let's say I just didn't want to scroll over you know you can just quickly do that so that's nice too and I believe this is everything you can add on the cover screen I'm not sure let's pinch out um, I believe so yeah okay so my honest thoughts on the cover screen is now, some people I've seen, they say that they are using the cover screen way more than the inner display. For me, that's just not the case. I find myself still using the, sorry about that, I'm going to tilt this up just a little bit. I find myself still using the inner display quite a bit. Now, when I'm on the go and you know I want to know what time it is, it's nice to be able to pull this out, double tap, I can see what time it is. Or if I want to see a notification, I don't have to unfold it. I can see at least see the notification and like think of what I'm going to say back to someone. Or if it's an email, you know, I can just go over here, open my Gmail, and see what that is. It's very handy. But for a lot of things like YouTube, when I'm at home, I'm still using the inner display a lot. I would say for me, I'm using the the inner display probably 90% of the time still okay so but you may and, and I do have big thumbs so like when I'm typing a message on the outer display the keyboards kind of tiny let me uh, bring up like uh, a notepad here I have Google like keep notes okay so here we go so here here's the keyboard and I believe this is the Samsung keyboard so that's all it will let you use on the outer display it's just the Samsung keyboard so you know my thumbs are pretty big so if we say hey this is a test of the see I put the keyboard you know it's definitely usable but that's kind of a, a minor nitpick is the keyboard is pretty small I think that's what deters me a little bit from the outer display and replying on the go. Uh, but you also have the, for me when I'm on the go, I'm, I'm with family. So I'm not, I don't really use the, the voice to text because I don't want, you know, the people I'm around to know what I'm saying. So a lot of the time I'm typing. 
but if you if you use the voice to text and you don't really mind the people around you hearing what you say then that makes it a lot easier to just reply on the cover screen but um, my wish so if you guys can kind of see here if I turn this back on unlock it uh, can I bring up something bright here to kind of demonstrate this uh, okay right here so so the, the weather the weather widget here uh, you, you see how the the display kind of goes over and then it it's got kind of the the notch for the cameras um, the the Motorola Razor Plus or the Razor 40 Ultra depending on what part of the world you're in it, it has a much nicer looking outer display it has the the screen that comes like all the way down and it fills in around the cameras and it does look a lot nicer and it's also on the Motorola it's um, it's either a 120 Hertz or a 144 Hertz the outer display on this is 60 I have no complaints there but you know I guess for the price the the retail price it should be a higher refresh rate but realistically it it probably wouldn't make that much of a difference so I don't really mind but I hope on the flip six they can uh, make this outer display just more edge to edge fill in around the cameras um, it's not a huge complaint for me on this but just kind of a little wish list there for the flip six okay so we kind of went over the cover screen it is really nice it has a lot of functionality so for me it, it, it definitely gets a big thumbs up okay now as far as the hinge you know I know a lot of people are probably concerned about that the hinge how has this held up for me can I sort of get you guys a good view on that it's held up perfectly fine I try my best not to drop it but you know it, it's it's really wicked to to watch this when you open it to see that that piece kind of go down into the back of the phone so you like you watch it from the side and then you kind of like watch it from the back now this hinge does feel very let's see if you guys can can hear this so like what's really neat is it kind of reminds me uh what do you guys think of that wallpaper do you like it? it's kind of the uh it's a neon statue of liberty with the the fireworks going there but when you you can have this set up to where when you when you have a phone call coming in so let's say you have it closed and um, you have a call coming in if you answer it with the phone closed it will default to speakerphone which I really like it's just a quick you know just this little I have kind of big hands so it fits in my hand pretty well so I can just answer the call and kind of just get a good grip on it you know if I'm getting into or out of the car and then if you don't want it on speakerphone any longer you can open it up and your call will go immediately to the earpiece and um, so that's really neat but yeah when it comes to the hinge I have no complaints apparently there's uh, some durability test out there on the flip five and it's held up perfectly well and that's the case for me of course there's going to be situations where people's uh screen protectors the one that comes built in to this phone have bubbled up there's going to be situations where maybe the hinge doesn't feel right or or something like that you know there's going to be phones that aren't exactly perfect because that's just kind of how manufacturing goes you know not every they, they do the best they can when they're manufacturing a phone but not every phone is going to be 100 perfect but as far as the one i have here this hinge feels really nice it doesn't feel resistive to me and so you know let's say you're you're in a phone call you know you opened it up you took the call when it was closed on speaker you open it up it's to your earpiece now when you get done with that phone call it's just so unreal 
it, it's I can't explain it, but you know, you say bye, and you you just do that, and you know your call hangs up, and you you know you've hung up. You can just put it in your pocket. It's an unreal feeling, and it kind of takes me back to uh, to the older days when flip phones were more you know more popular. It's going to get a bit of a, a wipe down there. Keep that nice and clean for you guys. So, and that's what I really enjoy about this, this Samsung Flip 5. This is my first ever flip phone, and I just enjoy having that, you know, being able to hang, flip it to hang up my calls, and just these neat features, you know, on the cover screen. If, I, if I'm out and about, and I do want to quickly check something, I want to check the weather, I want to check the stock market, maybe call somebody, or just quickly see what my notifications are without having to unfold it it is really nice and it does have a a lot of usability uh, let's see if i can get up close and let you guys kind of hear this close you know just that good chunk so i don't have a flip four but apparently with the flip four it didn't fully close so it kind of looked like a ramp like a wedge but this one does fully close. There's no like gap or anything. Let's see if I can kind of show this side too. There's no like big gap. It's an it's an even, you know, it closes flat, which is really nice. So yeah, no complaints from me. The hinge is great, build quality, speakers, battery life is is okay. So hopefully I covered everything. Hopefully I didn't forget anything. If you guys have any questions about this phone, be sure to leave those down in the comments. If you have a Flip 5 or even the Fold 5 or Fold 4 or pre previous flip phone from Samsung or any folding phone, you know, if you have the OnePlus Open or any other brand of flip phone, let me know what you think about it, your experience. And I guess I'm going to try to answer this question once again. When it comes to the price, $999, you know, um, as I said at the beginning of this video, if you don't really think any phone is worth that much money of your, of your money, I don't think this one's really going to change your mind. Um, but for me, although this is a really neat phone and I'm not going to sell it or or get rid of it i'm gonna wait to the to the flip six and probably upgrade to that i wouldn't really miss the outer display you know if i were to have like an s23 ultra or even the plus i would still be more than satisfied if this was just a candy bar phone s23 plus or ultra or the the soon to be released S24 Plus or the S24 Ultra. The the outer display is really neat, but it's not really I don't think I would miss it too much if I didn't have it. Now that's not going to be the use case for everyone. Some people out there get much more use out of the outer display than I do, and for those people, they probably wouldn't, you know, transition so smoothly back to a candy bar phone. But I got a really good deal from my friend on this phone, and I think what I paid him for it has been more than worth it. But at $999 for the 256 gig, or I think it's $1120 for the 512, it's kind of like it comes down to do you think it's worth that much of your money, and do you think you would get a lot of usage out of the outer display? You know? If you're using the inner display and the outer display about 50-50, I would say it's worth it. But if you're still using the inner display like me, you know, 70% or more of the time, it's probably not, not worth it. You know, I think that's how I can sum it up. But I appreciate you guys watching. Hope your new year's off to a good start. And I will see you guys back in the next video.